I've been browsing a lot on Pinterest lately and I got inspired by vacation spots. And with summer coming to an end soon, I thought we should make something summery. You know, last hurrah. Plus, we need a new space for the dolls. So today, we will make a Santorini-inspired background. I've taken apart our yoga studio so we can use the foam board for this project. This here is the wider wall of our box room. I carefully remove the brick print cardstock so we can still use them for our future projects. I didn't apply glue on the entire surface when we made our yoga room. There was just minor damage, but I can live with that. Flip the foam board to the other side. We will need to measure 7.5 inches from both ends going inside. And then let's draw a 12 inch line to connect our markers. And I'm making a one inch mark here from the bottom. Let's connect our lines on the bottom and the top. So in the middle of your foam board, you should have a rectangle measuring 11 by 5 inches. This will be our door. Measuring 2 inches from the side, I draw a rectangle. This measures 3 by 5 inches with the upper side aligned with the top of our door. I did the same on the other side. Now we have three rectangles. This will be our door, and the two smaller ones on the side will be our windows. Using a sharp box cutter, we will need to carefully cut out our rectangles for our door and windows. After carving out and removing those rectangles, we will be using these cut pieces of foam board to line the inside of our holes. Starting with the door, let's make a 1 inch mark here and another here. I aligned our ruler with our markers and I cut it out carefully with a box cutter. These pieces for the side part of our door are about 1 inch thick but I needed to make a little bit of an alteration for the top and bottom pieces. These are 1.5 by 5.5 inches. As for the windows, here are the pieces for the sides. These are for the top, and these are for the bottom. Our side pieces are 1 by 5 inches. The top are 1 by 3.5, and the bottoms are a little bit wider at 1.5 by 3.5. We just need to glue our cut pieces this time. Okay, so this is what it now looks like after we glued all of our liners for the insides of our door and windows. I made two duplicates of the pieces for our door and our windows. Get a piece of cardstock or a cardboard folder, trace our door, cut, and with the remaining piece of the cardboard folder, do the same with the window. We should have one piece for the door and two pieces for the window. And these are not the final sizes because we may need to trim these later. Let's set these aside for now. Get one of our foam board doors. After some fitting earlier, our ruler says our foam board door now measures 12.5 centimeters or a little under 5 inches. So dividing that in half, I made a mark at 6.25. And we will have to cut our door in half. I drew three rectangles on each half with different sizes. And let's carefully cut out these rectangles. Now we have this piece that looks like a ladder with incomplete steps. And remember, we have four pieces of this, so we still have three more to cut. Here are our door pieces with the rectangles cut out. This will be the front side and this one's going to be the opposite. Let's set aside the two. Let's get the cardstock we traced earlier. And I'm going to trim just a little bit of the top and the side. And then we will glue our door pieces on the cardstock. But what we do, we are going to leave a little bit of a gap just like that. One side is now glued. Let's get the other two pieces, flip our door, and glue our foam boards. To make our door, let's get one of our four window pieces. I drew a rectangle inside 2 inches by 4 inches. 
and let's cut it out like we did with the door earlier. And I repeated it with the rest of our pieces to make two thick window panes. Get one of our cardstock piece for the window, glue one of the panes on one side, flip it over, and glue the other pane. Repeat to make two windows. Let's make sure these pieces fit into our wall. Window 1, window 2, and the door. Next step, painting. I'm going to paint one side of our door and the windows with this blue paint. Depending on the paint you use, you may have to um, do multiple coats. This is the first coat, so I'm just going to leave this to dry and then I'll do another. After a few hours, our blue paint is dry. Time to paint the other side pink. After painting the other side pink, we're just gonna have to let it dry. Let's get the foam board we used for our yoga room's floor. I'm not taking off this wood grain contact paper because we might be able to use it someday. Let's just flip it over. And we will be using this contact paper that looks like gray concrete. Using white acrylic paint, let's draw outlines of giraffe patterns all over our flooring. Alright, so basically it appears that we are done painting this, but the layer of the white paint looks a little bit too pale for my taste, so I'm going to make a second coat and leave that to dry. Our door and the windows are now dry, so let's attach them onto our wall. Flip the wall with the back side facing up. We need to level the door with the frame here. For this next step, you can use a toothpick, but I'm using a pin. Find the center of the door and pin it in place. Do the same for the top piece. After attaching the pins, this is what it's gonna look like. Let's do the same for both of the windows. I temporarily moved to our display table so I can show you what our setup looks like. And the reason why we painted both sides of the doors in different colors is we want them to be reversible. This is such an easy way for us to change the look of our setup without necessarily dismantling everything. And it's also fun that you'll be able to change the color of the door and windows just by flipping them. But we are not done just yet, so let's head back to the crafting table. Before I glue our wall onto our floor, we need to have something that will support that side. I cut four pieces of foam board with the measurements on the screen. First, let's glue our squares behind our 3x6 and using our leftover foam board from earlier let's line the edges i'm going to cut 6.5 inches for the long side and um, i think we are going to need to cut about 2.75 inches for both sides get our 8x12 foam board and what i want to do is glue it on the rightmost side like so so this is what it looks like at the moment. We have our wall with the door and windows here and then we have the one that we just made. But since this one does not extend all the way to our wall, we are left with a space that's about 6 inches. So I made this piece. I'm going to use this piece as a fence to connect our bigger wall to the one that we just made earlier. This is just a piece of foam board with triangles cut out from it. It was a spontaneous decision to make this, so I didn't record. Let's glue this first piece on that side. Then I glue the fence. Then we can glue our big wall next. We've glued all of our pieces together and we also have our fence in place, but there's a huge gap right here and I don't like that. So I'll make a platform and put it under there. For the platform, I cut pieces of foam board with the following measurements. I glue the long piece behind the bigger one like so. And then we will glue the smallest piece on the side. Our platform fills that space just perfect. I cut several pieces of foam board. The measurements are on the screen. I glue one of our squares behind one of the sides of our 3x6. 
glue the other square on the other side and then glue the other three by six. I cut another piece of foam board that I glued on the bottom for added support. I glue one of our long strips on the long side, do the same on the other side, and then add the shorter pieces on the shorter side to make this box. I made two of these. Let's put our boxes in the scene and they really don't look that good if they're bare like that, so let's add some plants. I have a bunch of these flowers in purple and light pink. Our planter is quite deep, so we need to put something in that for elevation. Let's ruffle that a little bit. I love it. Here are our plant boxes with the flowers added. Let me put them here for now. And let's not forget that we have another plant box right there. I've got 10 strips of foam board. I glued them in a crisscross pattern to make a lattice. Let's cut off the excess. And I add it here on our blank wall using poster putty. I decided to use hot glue for those screens so they stick better. Then let's add these hanging leaves on this side and this side. I'm loving this new setup. Best part about this is, since our plant boxes are not glued, you're free to put them wherever you like. You can have just one, you can have two, or you can have all three. And if you're not a plant box person, you can do a little bit of recycling. We are recycling this mouthwash bottle cap, and I like that this is shaped like a plant pot. We will mix some paints. Let's see, this is the right color. That's perfect. This is a pot we painted that we can put our flowers in it. I have two, and you can use these instead of the plant boxes to put beside our door. And just like our plant boxes, you're free to put our potted plants anywhere you like. And if you wish to see a different color aside from blue, you can flip our door to give our setup a different color. And you can also add some tea lights to experience Santorini at night. And it looks so much better with all the other lights turned off except for our tea lights. I'm also adding a table and a couple of chairs, so we can show our dolls having a great vacation time. Thank you for joining us in making our very own Santorini-inspired background. Let us know in the comments down below what you want to see next. Give us a like, share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We'll see you next time.